What if I told you that it is possible to feel peaceful with one simple change? But I came across something this week which I have been applying which has revolutionized my life and it is something I wish I knew before and I am so anxious and excited to share this with you hoping that it will resonate with you and bring you the same sense of peace and contentment that I now feel. If you relate to any of this or have the same desire to find peace in your life regardless of what's going on around you, I hope you subscribe because this is what we're about on this channel, enjoying the life that we have. You may know that one of the things that we've been doing is working on decluttering our home in a reasonable, measured way, not willy-nilly giving away everything we have, but being thoughtful about it and recognizing how blessed we are and just looking to open up space to maybe get rid of the things that we acquire, too many of. One thing that I do, and I've mentioned this in a previous video, is that I meditate. I learned to do that three or four years ago, and I use an app called 10%, which is not a religious app, but it teaches you different skills. Skills of dealing with your emotions, skills of learning to be present and in the moment and mindful. There are different teachers. One teacher that I really enjoy is named Oren J. Sulfur. He has a calm mannerism about him, which I appreciate. I found a lesson by him where it's about finding happiness, and I was very surprised the first time I listened to it, but it's been meaningful enough I've listened to it three times now. It taught some things that I went back and I wrote them down so that I could communicate them properly. He said, discontentment is a feeling of lack. What if you didn't have to be anywhere or do anything? What if you could just be? When we feel discontented, we try to fill ourselves up with media, shopping, activities. Instead of focusing on what you don't have or want, focus on what is already here. Your body, your breathing, your hearing, your sight. What if you began to consider your life as a miraculous gift? One of the most powerful methods of ridding ourselves of discontentment is to believe that we have enough, what we have and are overlooking. What is here in your life right now, that's enough. Say to yourself, I have enough. I have enough clothing. I have enough understanding. I have enough abilities to do what I would like to do. Sometimes we do have places we want more, like more love, more something that we actually need. But right now, we focus on enough and feeling contented. Can you feel enough and let it be enough? Being content for just this moment is enough. really struck me, the idea of having enough, of being enough. So I decided to try it. I have gone around ever since then saying to myself, I have enough. I have enough. I am enough. Surprisingly, it has helped me declutter and declutter in a reasonable way. For instance, here I am decluttering my bedding, blankets and comforters related things. I have had a hard time in the past even thinking about doing this. These items took up a big share of a closet that I have by my bedroom, and they were all in these bags. When I needed to find something, I'd go in that room and I'd have to throw the bags around. It was very frustrating, very tedious, but I had this fear of going through these and of getting rid of these, even though I knew I needed to. Well, I was working on this principle of I have enough. So I decided I am going to try this and I brought them in, I stacked them on my bed and I started going through them saying to myself, I have enough, I have enough. And I realized, well, we have a lot of beds in our house, a lot of people living in our home and a lot of bedding in our home. 
and I feel that I need to have more than just one set because I like to change them out with the season. I'm grateful for what I have. It is fun for me to get to the summer and have something bright a different time of the year or depending on what's happening in my life, I want to have something that's calm. But I have a lot of these items that I'm tired of that I don't want to use anymore and they would really bless the life of someone else. These are the type of things that I could donate and I could donate them without any problems. There were things that I had that were just plain worn out. I took them off my bed to begin with because they were worn out. They should have been thrown away at the time. I can't donate them. <laughs> I would feel good about donating them. Why would I want to donate something that is completely worn out? But you see, I was afraid. What if I decided that I needed them? What if I decided the new things weren't right? So instead of throwing them away at the time, I put them in the bags and I've had them in my closet for more than a year, maybe two years. As I went through these bags and decluttered, it suddenly became easy for me to realize I'm not going to use these and no one will use these. I will throw these away. And these things I don't really care for and my family has decided they don't care for, which is why they brought them up here. And they have moved on and they have bought themselves new items. They don't want them either. We all have enough. So I bagged them up and I put them in my car and my car was just completely full to the point when I took it down to the donation center. The gentleman that helped me said, whoa, you were ready to donate. And I said, yeah, I was ready to donate. And I had the calmest feeling. I would say it was content. I felt content. Then I got really curious about the word content because I don't think I've had very many times in my life that I have felt content. And surprisingly, those times of my life were times when we didn't have very much and sometimes I worried about getting what I needed to feed my family or to clothe them and yet I felt very content. I started looking up content and what is being content and I found this marvelous article and it is by a professor that has worked in different universities, Berkeley, Yale. His team was studying emotions and they were able to go visit this group of former nomads that were high in the Himalayas. And this is a place that no outsider had ever traveled to before. And they made the first contact with them. What they wanted to find out, but people who have had no experience with the outside world recognize the same kind of emotions that we have. So they went there and they showed them pictures of people who were expressing different emotion. They found out that these people reacted the same, except they used a word that meant contentment. They described it as a state of unconditional wholeness, regardless of what was happening externally. And this word, contentment, and the state of contentment was their highest form and what they really saw. So the professor looked up the Latin root of the word content, which is contentus, which means held together, intact, or whole. It evolved into something that reflects on a person, that describes someone who feels complete. It asks the question, how do you feel inside? How complete are you as a human being? Then when he moved to Yale, he had his team go back through thousands of years of statements by wise people, looking 
for contentment and happiness. And they were very surprised to find out there were very few references to happiness, but many to contentment. And he said when the dust settled, it emerged that humans have been using two different methods for thousands of years to try to find some method of well-being. And one is something that the West uses and another is something that the East uses more. The, so the first method is the more strategy. And that's where people try to find happiness through more money, more power, more stuff, more validation, more success from the world outside of them. It's dependent on things that happen to you or that are around you. The other strategy is the enough strategy. That's where people pay direct attention to what's happening inside of them to find the happiness that they already have. And they describe it as unconditional wholeness, regardless of what is happening externally. If you think about this, your perspective completely shifts. And I realize that I have wanted to be happy and I have said it in a number of videos on this channel that I want to be happy. We want to be happy. And in the West, that's how we describe it. We want to be happy. And so we have sometimes mistakenly chased happiness by acquiring a lot of things. And then when we've had a lot of things, we've realized, well, we're not really happy. And then we start feeling burdened down by all of these things. We feel that maybe we'll be happier if we get rid of the excess and we create more space in our life. But you see, we're seeking more. Some people do find a sense of contentment. But when you don't have a lot of things, then you have to find something else. And sometimes they find it inside of themselves. Is contentment complacency? And I realized, no, it's not. Now, I love to learn things. And if I'm seeking to learn something else, am I looking for something outside of myself? Maybe I'm considering that I'm not enough, but then I realized, no, I'm, I'm enough. I'm enough and I know enough that I can enjoy finding out and learn something that actually becomes part of me. But in this moment, I am content because I have enough and I am enough. I am feeling this because I am literally saying it to myself. I haven't arrived at the point where I could just let that go and have that maintained. But I'm saying to myself, I am enough. I have enough. I really do have enough. And it's important to know that contentment still allows things that are happening around you. For instance, emotions. Emotions are a part of being human. And one thing I've learned as I have participated in this meditation app, 10%, there are some of the teachers that teach you about emotions. What we do is we often fight emotions. We don't want to feel uncomfortable. And so if somebody has been rude to us or we have felt that we aren't being treated fairly, then we get upset, we feel angry, we feel disappointed, maybe we'll feel embarrassed or humiliated or sad because we've lost someone or something and we don't like those uncomfortable feelings and so we try to push them away and ironically the more we struggle against them and push them away the more we feel them and the longer they last. Emotions are like the ocean with the waves. They will come, and if we just allow them and allow us to feel them, they will build up and they will crest, and then they will eventually fade away. If you think about happiness, happiness is that way, and happiness is an emotion. We might feel temporarily happy because maybe someone has said something to us, or we go shopping and in that moment we feel happy, it's fun being in there. We may acquire something and we'll feel happy, but it doesn't last. 
it is not sustainable. So we are constantly seeking another hit of happiness because we enjoy that feeling. When the emotion is good, we don't fight that, we enjoy it. We might try to cling on to it and hold on to it and then become disappointed when it doesn't stick with us. So we go chasing the next hit of happiness. But contentment is different. It's inside of us and it's just there if we allow it to be there. There are some things we can do to acquire contentment or to realize that we can be content. Not surprisingly, the first one is to practice mindfulness. It is one of the most studied practices. It calms our body. It helps us weather the cyclone of our mind and our thinking and of our emotions. There are literally thousands of websites and videos and apps, and I am now quoting this professor. And it's something that people discuss, all kinds of doctors and Oprah talking about become mindful because when you are being mindful, you are in this moment. You're not living in the past. You're not seeking for the future. You're not regretting what happened before or seeking this thing in the future that can be happy or worrying about the thing that might be frightening and make us feel bad. We're just right here right now. Like right now, all I'm doing is talking to you. I'm not thinking about breakfast that I haven't eaten yet. I'm not thinking about what I might do with my husband when he comes home. But right now, I'm just thinking about this thing that I'm talking to you about and I'm hoping will be meaningful to you and add some joy to your life to realize that you can be content. Does your body feel relaxed when you are being mindful? When you're in the kitchen and you are cooking and you're hearing the chopping and you're enjoying stirring the ingredients together and you're sitting at the table and all you're doing is eating that food and tasting that food, do you feel relaxed? Do you feel a little bit calmer? Well, that's contentment coming online. Another thing you need to do is identify the things that you are saying to yourself, even maybe unconsciously, about what is required for you to be ha happy or content. Like you say, well, when I retire, then I can really relax and enjoy my life. When I purchase this car, then I'm going to be doing well. And again, I am using this article by this professor, which I'm going to link to in the description, and I hope that you will choose to read it. If you're really interested in this topic, it's so marvelous. Well, it's really good to have goals and things that you want to learn and you want to achieve. What can be a problem? And what can cause you to feel unhappy and uneasy is when you put this attachment to this, that you can't be happy now, you can't be calm now, you can't be contented now because you don't have that thing or you haven't experienced that yet. Those ideas reinforce this idea that you can't be okay right now. Instead, ask yourself how you can feel whole how you can feel complete. If you learn to take ownership of your personal well-being instead of leaving it up to other people and factors that are outside of yourself, it will help build the contentment muscle. Contentment is an underlying acceptance of what it means to be human. That is a direct quote from this professor. He says it's an unconditional love for all of life's experiences without the need for anything more than what is here right now. It is amazing to me how telling myself that I'm enough and I have enough has made it easier to let go and I believe it's going to be a lot easier to go through a certain category of items I have that have things that I kind of collected and things that I inherited. I'll be able to ask myself questions and really be able to say what is enough and what is the enough point for me. 
I've been through some different stages on this journey to find peace and I made a video about some things I discovered that have really helped me and I'm going to link to that right here. I hope I hear from you and I hope I see you next time. Bye.